Well, good afternoon, my friends. Ah, oh, you have found the needle bow. My name is Karen, and we are here today to do a bit of a stitch with me. Wow, my apologies, folks. I was going to have this up two days ago. You would not believe the kerfluffles. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what a kerfluffle is, it is just everything. And there we had that one too. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. That old wives tale. I cannot tell you, no, I can tell you, how many times I recorded this video in the last two days. Probably about five. And I kept losing my sound so that I am sitting here yakking away and the computer is picking up nothing. All you see is my mouth moving. You hear nothing. However, I think I have it fixed. You should be hearing me now. I see my meter going up that yes, I do have sound. So hopefully today is going to be better than the last two. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Always a technical issue when you come to this channel. <laughs> Always. Always something. But hopefully we are all fixed and all good to go today. So we shall see. So I thought. I would do a bit of a stitch with me today. And there's a little bit of a story behind this stitch with me. You guys all know, you never know what to expect when you come here. Is that not true? When you're looking at this stitching and you're going, hmm, hmm, what is Karen doing now? I can hear you. I can hear you. You're all questioning. I hear it, these little voices coming in the window from behind me. Well, here's the deal. One of my lovely subscribers, let's sit back in this chair a little bit more. Here we go. One of my lovely subscribers sent me a picture and said, this is a chart since you did Stitcher's Retreat. I really like that. And you're still looking for the one. <laughs> This is one I thought you might like. It's on Artisy. So I thought, well, thank you very much. That's very, very kind. I will go have a look. Of which I did. I went and had a look. And it is a very, very nice picture. However, it wasn't quite exactly what I was... I want to fix my light here a little bit. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So... I thought, well, you know what? Stitching wise, as far as full coverage, you have only, you being me, have only really stitched in the Nerf designs. You have not ventured into the other world of full coverage designers. I thought, well, as long as we're here, I hadn't really perused this site a whole lot in the past. Let's. Let's give it a go and give it a look around and ah, see what we can find. Maybe we'll find something that we like. Who knows? You never know. You go surfing, channel surfing, and you never could quite know what you're going to find. I'm sticking my uh, keyboard up here, so hopefully it's not going to fall back down. <laughs> there we go. Something was underneath there. Um, you never know what you're going to find. So let's have a look around. So I started, you know, my little clicky finger went clicking away because, well, we all know how that works. And now you guys know I have started God Shed His Grace by Cross Stitch Studio. And it is a rather large chart. I forget the exact dimensions, but I can tell you it was it, it just the panel that I was going to divide it into three panels. 
and just the panel that I was going to do was over 170,000 stitches. Okay. All right. Well, I came across Artisy's version of God Shed His Grace. Now, the large one is pretty close in size to the one panel that I was going to do. Just that first section, like um, five pages wide and the whole length of the chart was 170 plus thousand stitches. And the large version of God Shed His Grace on Artisy was about that same size. But then I saw they had a medium and they had a small. So of course, curiosity killed the cat and curiosity got the best of Karen and she had to go looking what she did only to find that the medium size one was really every bit as nice as the large one which were both every bit as nice as crusted studio and it was over 40,000 stitches less this one yes I bought it long story to say yes i bought it and yes i started this one is 300 high by four or hold on 450 wide and it's the whole picture <laughs> it is not just it is not just the um first panel that i was going to do it's the whole thing and at 450 by 300 even though it's full coverage that is a bit more doable than the larger cross stitch studio chart so needless to say karen jumped right on that bandwagon and she purchased it and then she downloaded it and she started it now the really cool thing was the piece of fabric that i had cut to do the first panel of what i was going to do happened to turn out to be perfect for this piece. So the width of what I had that was going to be the width of that first panel was exactly the perfect size for the height of this new chart. And the length, no, this is the length. <laughs> I do this every time. The length was perfect for the what I had as the width of the other chart so I didn't have to alter that at all and it had perfect margins in fact it had a smidge more than what I needed which was absolutely perfect so then the length of this piece of material was more than an elegant sufficiency for the width the width of this new piece so i in order to reuse this piece of material i didn't even have to frog anything <laughs> you guys are going to give me eyes i can hear i can see the evil looks <laughs> all i had to do was chop off what was already stitched and i still had quite an elegant sufficiency of fabric left on each side in fact Pardon me while I root a little bit here. I have three inches on this side and closer to three and a half inches on the other side. 
so just getting rid of the part that I had already stitched from the cross stitch studio one to do this one was salvaging a piece of fabric and it really was a no-brainer okay it really was <laughs> that's what I did and of course I started it I absolutely did <laughs> Yeah, it just it just said to me, you know what, Karen? You might just be able to finish this one and you will have the whole thing as opposed to just one panel. And the whole thing will fit on this piece of fabric just wonderfully. So, yeah, that's what I did. And you know what? I'm quite happy that I did it. Quite happy that I did it. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Did I buy anything else? No, I did not. I only bought this chart to restart. I'm just amazed that it actually worked out that I could use the same piece of fabric. And you know, it was worth restarting. People, you're probably saying, oh my God, oh my God, you had so much stitch. Not really. I really only had a smidge over 2,000 stitches stitched. So in that grand scheme of things, that really wasn't much of anything. I mean, that was like a drop in the bucket. So it did not break my heart in the least to stitch or to get rid of that and start this. It was not a heartbreaker. It was, it was a no-brainer. It was, yeah, you just have to do this. You just have to do this. So that is what we did. And now you're also going, oh yeah, what is, what, 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 which way is she stitching now? I hear you, you're yelling, it's getting loud. You're going, oh my God, he's doing something different again, people. Would you not expect anything less? Anything less. But by the way, I forgot in the beginning here to welcome each and every one of you to this video. To my people who have been with me for a long time, thank you so, so much for coming back and hanging out and putting up with this craziness of you never know what you're going to find. And for those of you that are new here, thank you so, so much for giving the channel a chance. And I hope you find something that you like and you, and you want to stick around a little bit. Because as I said, you never know what you are going to find on my videos. We could have technical difficulties. We could have stitching difficulties. We could have Karen can't get her words out right. It doesn't matter. It's how we roll here. There's always something. And sometimes people end up laughing quite a lot. <laughs> so I welcome each and every one of you. I've had quite, quite an abundance of new subscribers lately, and that is just absolutely wonderful and does my heart good. So I hope you find something to, to decide to want to stick around a while and hit that subscribe button. So now back to this. You go, uh-huh. True to form, Karen, we never know what to expect. Because now, what are you doing? Well, you folks all know my friend Barb, who normally who stitches with me pretty regular, doesn't live too far from me. And uh, we go to retreats or day stitches together and what have you. And she stitches on the diagonal which you see, I have went back to a diagonal. And she stitches it a bit differently than I did. Now, first let me say, when I started this on Monday, <laughs> I started it Monday, my plan was to go 10 stitches wide, stitch up, up the column, go all the way up to the top, and then maybe come all the way back down and do it by columns. 
feathering into the next column when I could do that and it was appropriate. Well, I got, let me use this to cover it up. I got what you see, here we go. I got as far as what you see here. Well, not quite that far. Another dilemma. I think Karen's losing her marbles. And if you see them, would you bring them back to me, please? Because just this little bit, I do believe I ripped more times than I put stitches in because I kept miscounting. Gridded fabric and I was miscounting. I was placing the stitches wrong or I pulled the wrong color. It was just not a pretty sight and it was just not happening the way it should. So I went, okay, now what? Now what? You want to stitch this. This might be the one. And after all this, it better be the one. <laughs> but I was getting a little frustrated. I don't normally rip that much. I don't know what my problem was. But I put stitches in and then I go to put the next color. Because what I was going to do was color complete within the column. Like start with a, a strand of color A. Stitch that till it ran out. Come back down here to the beginning. Get the next color. Stitch that till it ran out. And so forth. Well, I go to put the next color in and I go... This ain't right. This is not right. There's something wrong. And then I sit and study the chart and study what I had and go, yeah, you miscounted. Out it comes. Put it in again. Well, you know how frustrating it is when you make the same mistake over and over again? Yeah. That's what was happening. So I said, okay, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. So what I started then doing was going back to diagonal, entering again my love-hate relationship with parking, because we all know how I feel about that. This week I love it, next week I hate it. The next week I might go back to it again, and three weeks from then I hate it. Love-hate. But I think I'm, I think this could change. Don't quote me. <laughs> Don't quote me on anything. <laughs> I think I might just have to bite the bullet and say, this is just what you need to do. This chart lends itself to being nice to stitch in that manner because Yes, there's color changes, but they are not out of this world color changes, as some charts we know can be. So I went back to stitching on the diagonal. I don't know what I did with my needle that I thought I had stuck in my shirt. We got one here. I went back to stitching on the diagonal and I said, okay, come on, Karen. Sometimes your fingers don't work well. <laughs> and I said, this time, again, I'm going to try stitching my rows vertically. Now, when I first, when Barb first stitch, started stitching vertically and I watched Brian blitz stitch, I watched his videos on it, I had a heck of a time wrapping my head around it. It just was not computing. However, I think now I have a way to do it that is going to, for the most part, make sense for me. I think. So what I thought I would do today oh, hooey, is 
stitch on the diagonal vertically to show you guys how I am doing it. It's, I, it's probably not the way Brian does it. It's how I am doing it. And we all know, we all know, there is not a right way. There is not a wrong way. There is only whatever way works for you and you are happy with. You know I say that time after time after time after time. There ain't no stitching police out there. So they ain't coming to your house to say, you're doing it wrong. And if every, anybody does come and say to you, you maybe you're out at a day retreat or a retreat somewhere and somebody's coming up to you and saying, oh my God, you're doing that wrong. You can't do it like that. You tell them the only right way is my way. And you can quote me on that one. Because there's nothing that irritates me more than people saying, oh my God, you did it wrong and being judgmental. That whole nother rabbit hole Karen's not going to go into today. So what, I do, what I'm doing is this. And hopefully you can follow along on. I put my iPad on the screen and hopefully you can follow along and I won't get too lost <laughs> in the meantime but i'm staying within the diagonal now these stitches up here were in before i switched to diagonal i'm staying within the diagonal i will wander out of it when i can to um feather a little bit into the next diagonal because just as you get lines when you stitch in columns, just as you can get lines when you stitch in squares, you can get lines when you stitch on the diagonal. They're probably not as prominent or as often, but you can get lines. Lines have to do with tension. Lines have to do the way you're pulling the fat, the thread and the way it's distorting the fabric. So, yeah, I will feather when I can. Now, what I'm going to do is this first color, which are the twos. And it just so happens that the rest of this row is all twos. I'm going to go up the, I think it's easiest to call vertical, call them columns, we stitch horizontal, call them rows. I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm going to go up this column and I'm going to stitch the first half of all the twos till I get to the last stitch of the diagonal. And really, I am a one handed stitcher for the most part. Okay, now that stitch is in the next diagonal and it is a different color. So now I'm going to come back down and cross them. Now, if I had more colors in this uh, vertical, what I would do is I would start at the bottom and do the first color and then work, go up and do the next color. And then, then until I had the whole, the whole column completed. Where I'm at right at this moment is a lot of this, just two colors. Okay, so now I will here. I will mark these off. And I will look over and say, hmm, 
where do I use that again? Well, where I use it again is write the first stitch in the next column over. And it's all this same color up until I get up to my park thread. One stitch of my park thread, another stitch of the two, and I can cross it. Okay. So really, you're doing the same thing as when you stitch horizontal rows. You just turned it on its side. <clears throat> and that's really the only difference. Plus, the other difference is I'm not crossing each stitch as I go. I'm doing a half stitch on the way up and crossing them on the way down. And in all honesty, it's probably a little hard for you to see because it's such dark colors. But in all honesty, I really do think my stitches look neater this way. I really, I really do believe that. Now, I could, I could be just blown wind, you know. I could be wrong. But I do, I do feel like they're neater. So now I'm going to skip this one because that's that color. Put this one in. And then I'm going to go back and cross them. Now you will also notice that I started, okay, I got a rich back for my back here, people. I should get a pillow and put it behind me in this chair. Um, I started from the bottom, in the bottom right corner of the chart. And when I work the rows in my diagonal, I'm working them from bottom to top as opposed to top to bottom. And there's a reason for that. The reason being that way I continue to cross my X's in the manner in which I have always been accustomed to crossing them, which is bottom left to top right, bottom right to top left. So my X's are going to cross just the same but what it enables me to do is come up in that empty hole and go down in the previous column. So I'm continuing to maintain that um, clean hole, dirty hole thing. So I'm, I'm finishing off the X's. I'm coming up in the clean holes and I'm going down in the dirty holes. Now, this color will get parked. Let me mark these. I have my iPad underneath my scroll frame here. <laughs> so we're going to mark this, 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 and this. And we are going to park it right here. And I'm going to park it in the bottom left corner. Okay. So I'm going to park this here. Then I'm going to go back up here. And I'm going to do the U-turn. Okay, I'm going to do that the same way. Uh, this stitch up here is when I have the diagonal line on the chart, whatever stitch that line goes through, I make part of the 10 that I'm working on. I don't save it for the next diagonal. I keep it in, as you can see, in this first diagonal. Okay, so whatever you decide to do with that, it doesn't matter. You can do just, you can go to the stitch right before that line and keep the line, the stitch with the line in it for your next diagonal, or you can do it the way I do. The only thing is just be consistent with what you do.
You wouldn't believe how long it took me to be able to wrap my head around stitching this way. I just had a mental block. I just could not do it. So now I'm going to mark this thread and it starts three down from that last stitch. Okay, now here's the thing that I learned the hard way and probably why I was making so many mistakes. When we're parking, our instinct, at least mine, was to um, count off of existing parking stitch, park stitches. However, that being said, if you parked that stitch wrong, of which this that I just parked up here, three down from this other stitch that's already completed, I probably really should have brought it all the way down here to the bottom. Or I could let this part where it is start another thread down here at the bottom and use those use that thread for because they're kind of further apart and when i finish these few up here of the u-turn i could park this thread over in the next column and use it there it's up to you how you do that you can do either or i think what i am going to do is bring it down here and see here's what i did i parked this thread in the wrong place because it should be up one. So, lesson. When you're parking, look at your graph and hopefully count and see correctly. But also look at your 10 by 10 squares and count the stitches within the 10 by 10 square to make sure you're putting it in the right place. So, the one I, the two I have marked in this next column where I have it parked is three down from my 10 by 10 square line. And where I parked it is one, two, three, four down. So this is at the wrong place. This should be up one thread. So see, I don't even take my own advice. But that is my advice to any of you is you can you know my when i first glanced at that it's oh that's at the bottom of the next diagonal or the next vertical but i didn't actually look close enough and count so now i'm going to move this up one it's in the right place one two three down from the grid line okay which means this where i parked up here can really be brought and should be brought well the way i'm doing it i would bring it down here and now work this color first and count up to that third one down from here so up to back up to here which is two up from the grid line, one, two, and then the third one, and complete these few stitches, which is three. And yes, I don't have a problem carrying across that space because what will happen? This color it's going to stitch over that thread carry. Okay. So I'm going to stitch these three. Okay. 
Okay. And then I'm going to come back down and complete this one. And I'm going to be a good girl and mark these off. And now I'm going to park at the bottom of the next vertical, which is right here in the bottom left. Okay. Yes, there's one at the bo bottom, one at the top. So I'm going to park that there. So really, in the grand scheme of things, this is just like stitching row by row. I forgot to turn my phone on. Do not disturb. I hope that didn't bother you. Um, it's just like stitching row by row. It's just that you're stitching, you're turning it on its side. And I'm not doing each X individually. I'm doing half and then coming back and doing the other half. And now you will see, I will only do two stitches, skip the heart and do the other twos. And then I will have to add the color for the heart. So two, skip one, Do two more. And then come back and cross them. The, the, the nice thing about stitching this way whether it be in rows whether it be in columns whether it be in 10 by 10s or whatever um i at heart am a cross-country stitcher at heart that is my my go-to way that is the way that i have always stitched um yeah it's my preferred method However, on these designs, it's just, on these full coverage, it's just too easy to lose your place and get lost. And that part I find very frustrating. And when I stitch this way, which again is not my preferred go-to way, but it is the way that keeps me on track. And I, you know, I've talked about that before of, I, th I think full coverage pieces are best stitched in some kind of methodical way and whichever methodical way you choose to, to do it. I mean, you don't, nobody has to stitch my way or anybody else's way. You find the way that works for you. And that's one of the questions I get a lot of, you know, which way is the best way or whatever. And it's like, there is, there is no best way. The best way is the way that works best for you and what what works best for you might not work best for me and vice versa my best suggestion to people is look at other people that stitch full coverage and there's a lot of full coverage stitchers out there look at how they do it and what you end up doing or what you can end up doing is taking a little bit from this person, a little bit from that person and put it all together and come up with your own way of doing it. 
because like I always say, there's no, there's no right way. It's just whatever best suits you. So now I am going to start this just a little bit different. I'm going to go down in the center of this stitch that I want to start in. And I'm going to come up in the corner. And with that, I'm going to leave just an itsy bitsy little tail and go down in my top corner. And then I'm going to come up in my corner here. And I don't think that's going to pull out. And I'm going to go down in this corner. And yeah, that's secure. Okay. And I'm going to park it right next door. Okay. Until actually I could complete that stitch because I'm now on that row. So why don't I just do that while I'm here? So I am trying to do the, you know, not, um, I am trying to not like leave an empty space and everything stitched around it. I'm trying to work methodically out column by column and I'm working down. So the column is always going to be 10 stitches, but it's going to be on the diagonal if I need to, or find it appropriate and the best thing to do to go out of that diagonal a little bit, I will like here where I did because those were the only stitches of that color in the next column. So why am I going to thread a needle for two stitches when I have it in my needle right here? So I, I think I still think the best thing to do is do some feathering. And the thing about feathering, I see a lot of folks and again, there's nothing wrong. It's fine. But I see a lot of folks maybe doing that sawtooth kind of feathering down the down their column or down their diagonal or their page end and again just my personal opinion however you choose to do it is fine but what i would prefer when i'm stitching is to stagger my feathers so to speak to where i'm going into the next diagonal or the next column is to stagger that because a dedicated pattern as you're coming down a page like at the end of a page or across the bottom of the page that dedicated sawtooth can leave just as much of a line as a straight line because it's a consistent it's always the same. It's, it's a dedicated line. I think it's better to, when you're feathering into the next diagonal, the next column or the next whatever, to do it willy nilly. And sometimes maybe go one stitch, sometimes go four stitches or whatever, and just randomize it. That's what's going to really prevent your column lines. I mean, think about people that stitch cross country there are no types of blunt so to speak edges because if they go cross country they go by color everything in the grand scheme of things is random and that's why cross country stitchers don't get any lines in their work because it's all there's nothing that's okay here is the end of the page because to them there is no end of page it's a color that keeps on flowing however it goes because what they're following is they're following color. 
they're not following columns or pages or diagonals. That's just my do. That's just my thing. So that's why I will feather whenever I can get some, some more um, stitches in the next diagonal, I will do some of those into that. Um, the other thing is, and I probably will do this also, I'm not going to flip my work because you really ought to see how I have this rigged here. <laughs> I'm not flipping it. But I am going to start and end my threads, uh, if I can, on the top. I mean, here is a place where I did already, but I will carry threads over into the next di diagonal just to help prevent those channels in the back. If I can do, if I can at all do that. So I think we have a good 45 minutes here and I hope you got the gist of how to stitch vertically in the, in the diagonal if you choose to do that. Again, it's just the same as stitching horizontally. It's just that you're turning it on its side. And I'm not crossing as I go. I'm doing half the stitch and then coming back and doing the other half. Um, at this point, I do rather, I do rather like it. It is quite, um, quite interesting, you know. And I and I'm I'm finding that the more, <laughs> the more I come across um, designs where I have a whole lot of block color stitching god i get bored. it's boring 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 sometimes i could just throw this against the wall throw a piece against the wall because of all the confetti but in the next breath if it's too much block stitching and all one color it's like oh my god i can't do this color anymore <laughs> i need a little bit of a challenge uh, when it comes to that i'm just thinking was there something when I started this video, I had something else I wanted to talk about. And now I can't remember what it was. No wonder I miss counting. I can't even remember what I was going to talk. I should have made notes. But after f doing this five times in the last two days, I thought, oh yeah, Karen, you got this down pat. You'll remember. <laughs> no, <laughs> not so much. Not so much. Um, I am going to say, though, this. What I'm finding for me is I may cut back just a little bit on how many videos I post. In the past, I've been, well, here the last couple of months, I've been doing maybe two a week. And what I'm finding is I'm not getting a lot of my stitching done or what I want to stitch done because I'm spending all the time setting up, recording a video, editing, getting it posted and all of that. So in order to be able to do a little bit more of my stitching, I probably am going to just post a video a week. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to abandon the hard anger stitch along. Um, I will probably do a stitch with me one week, the hard anger the next week. And in addition to that, I have not done a lot of these and I if I, because I, I haven't been able to get a whole lot of, of stitching done, um, I probably, I'm planning on starting to do a monthly update. So that, and, and that is why I'd like to do just a little bit less video and do a monthly update where I can show you the progress that I am making 
to do that, I think, will, okay, what I'm hoping is that it will hold me a little bit more accountable to get some stitching done. Because in all honesty, sometimes till you get all the things for a video, till you, like I spent a good hour just setting up to do this video and all this, all it is is getting my screens ready, getting my my iPad on the screen, getting the camera on the screen, getting the stitching on the screen and, you know, till you connect all the dots. And get that the cameras focused and all of that stuff. It takes time. It takes time. And then, of course, you're looking at the time to actually sit and record it. And then you have to render it. And then you you know you you have to do some editing if you're gonna if something needs editing and then you have the upload time and to do this kind of a to do a video it's gonna take the best part of all afternoon and then when you run into issues like I ran into issues Monday and Tuesday I got virtually no stitching done because I was to figure out why I didn't have any sound <laughs> or why the sound wasn't coming through in the software. So, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff involved in this. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to back it down just a little bit. Um, nothing's going to change. You'll get uh, much the same content as what you're getting. Now it just might be a little less often. Instead of, I mean, like I said, I've been doing probably two videos in a week. Sometimes, sometimes the third one was thrown in if I had, you know, if somebody asked me a question and it was like, oh yeah, more people need to know about this. Uh, they would benefit from knowing how to do this and then the Hardanger stitch along added a little bit more. So, yeah. So I hope that you will all bear with me in that. And there will still be lives. Um, probably once a month. For everyone. Uh, my VIP members, I try to get a live just for them which I need to schedule, by the way, guys. <laughs> we will do one real soon. Um, yeah, so with that, I ask just please bear with me. And I got two stockings I need to get finished for Christmas. So I need, a, need to take just a little bit more time to do that. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, if you can just hang in there with me. Uh, I, and I know there's a lot of, I generate a lot more videos than a lot of floss tubers do. And there are a lot of people that they just do every other week or once a month or whatever. So all I ask is the same courtesy, so to speak. So with that, I think we are going to call this one a day. I hope you have enjoyed your time here. I hope you learned a little bit about stitching on the diagonal and stitching your row vertically as opposed to horizontally. Give it a try. You might like it. And to tell you the truth, I found I like it stitching from left to right and up instead of, I'm sorry, right to left and up instead of left to right and up because I like it better when my threads lay to the left as opposed to my threads laying to the right. But again, try it different ways. Try different corners. See what works for you. And if you don't want to do diagonal, don't do diagonal. Do whatever your little heart desires <laughs> because there ain't no police going to come knocking at your door. <laughs> And the frog, when he comes to visit, chuck that puppy to the pond. 
because we don't want no frogs. <laughs> I had enough of him this week. <laughs> okay, my friends. I will see you next time. And you all know how we end every video. And every video ends with there are no rules in cross stitch. The only rules are the ones you make for yourself. Until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.